Hello, everybody. We're trying to hear you. We're trying to talk to you. Can you hear us? Can you hear us now? It doesn't look like there's any. Oh, there we go. We're getting something there. Can everybody? We're trying to hear you. Okay. There we go. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Now, you guys missed my new jazzy manamana song. Dee, 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 dee. All right. Okay. There we go. We don't know what's wrong with the. We don't know what's wrong with the sound system, but we are going to fix that. Okay, welcome everybody to Tuesday Live Get Organized Challenge number four embellishments. I am going to go ahead and jump right in with some announcements. Number one announcement is yes, the paper carts are back in stock. Yesterday they went live on the website. We sold yesterday about 78% of the stock. There's a very limited quantity of them left. So if you have been thinking about a paper cart and you want one, today is your day. So when I say limited, boy, there were less than a hundred of them left this morning on the website. So jump on there if you want one, get yours ordered. I know the aprons are sold out already, but um, just a heads up to those of you who are part of the Tuesday Tribe and the Get Organized Challenge, they are going to be out of stock sooner than later. So if you want one, please. And we will post up a couple links to them um, right here in the website. Now, the um, paper carts work with your uh, paper handlers, your 12 by 12 uh, fab files, your paper, your 12 by 12 paper takers. All of those things are interchangeable within the shelves of the cart. The vinyl roll organizers, the um, these guys, the slide stash and store, they all fit on the cart also. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't have enough paper for that, or I don't want to fill it with paper because it's heavy to roll around, you can mix and match what is on there, and you can use any of the other storage items to perfectly make that cart. I know some people just, they have their Cricut machine on it, and then they have their vinyl and all their tools and all that. So maybe you're thinking of it as a Cricut station as well, but it's going to work with any of our other um, things are going to fit in there. No, Diane is asking if the bits and bobs drawer set is going to come back. No, it will not. However, um, the uh, the new 12 by 12 storage and supply cases, which are scheduled for late in the year, I think September, I, those you'll be able to stack those up and get a similar um, kind of product using those things. So do you have a, okay, thanks, honey. My husband's running an errand for me this morning. Um, so, well, those won't be back. You'll be able to get something that does a similar job. Also, your current storage and supply cases, if you open them up and stack them, you will be able to create something similar. I know the depth of those, they were 12 inches deep, which is nice. And so for that, you're going to have to wait for the bigger ones, but they are on their way. So look for those early fall, late summer. Um, Scrap Masters are on sale today also save seven dollars that's over 20 percent uh so if you need those if you're getting your paper organized or you're ready to you know combine and conquer those things in your paper storage system scrap masters great deal today the 12 by 12 craft binders back in stock i'm going to talk about that later the cindy tote for those of you who missed it is now available so there are two places you can buy the cindy tote right now hsn and i'm going to go through it really quickly so for those who haven't seen it has a bundle the cindy tote with four buddy bags included in that bundle. They only have the black Cindy tote with that bundle. On our website, we have the Cindy tote in both black and purple. Now I know for those of you who haven't seen Cindy, you are saying that looks just like Lois. She does look like Lois. She's the same dimensions as Lois and she will hold everything that Lois holds. Uh, let me just go real quickly through the differences. Um, she has a clear pocket on one side. These are all the things that are an upgrade from Lois. Clear pocket on one side, uh, fabric pocket on the other. So a little bit more security there. She has got this wonderful padded shoulder strap, uh, padding for the shoulder strap. Now this comes totally off and you can, it opens up so you can put both of the straps into it. And then it does slide into the perfect location for your shoulder. So uh, you've got this really nice padded piece there. And then of course, the big, big excitement about Cindy is that she has this full zip off lid so you can zip her closed 
right? And have a lid on there and that makes this pocket a top pocket. You can unzip it and that flap will drop all the way down flat into the back of the bag and then you can use that pocket this way. So you can use her with the lid or without the lid either way. She is the same dimension as the Lois, which I mean, which is 13 by 13 by 10, which means you are going to be able to fit inside of her the uh, 12 by 12 paper taker, the Lisa um, buddy bag. You can use your vinyl roll organizer trays or your slide stash and store trays to organize there. Of course, the paper handler and the 12 by 12 fab file are all going to fit as well. And you can still close the lid over the top with any or all of those things in there. So really super versatile. You are going to love her. She is just a level up from our girl Lois. Is that all my announcements? Oh, purple buddy bags in Karen and Kirsten available only exclusively at the Stamps of Life. We'll get some links up to all of these things in the in the feed, and I'll try to get them up on Facebook as well. But if you love Kirsten and Karen, which are two of our most popular buddy bags, you can buy them um, at the Stamps of Life in a bundle in purple. So if you love purple or you just want a little bit of color on your buddy bag shelf, uh, those are a really great option. Uh, slide session. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Woo woo. Uh, I stacked all my stuff over here as I was. Okay. So today's handout printable, right on the website, you can download it for class. As always, you can download it and print it, or you can do use the flip book version of it right there on the website. It's your first goal today. Well, our first goal our first thing to talk about is a little quote I love from Mark Twain that says, um, just because you're on the right track, you'll still get run over if you just stand there. And this is sort of my like, you got to get busy, you got to get going. And then when I was reading all the posts on Facebook about the challenge and all the progress posts, boy, it's amazing. I just want to say congratulations to everybody who really did a lot of work last week. And a lot of work is different for everybody. Like some people, a lot of work is 40 hours of doing photo storage. And for some people, a lot of work is two hours because they're the only two stray hours, spare hours they had in the week. And they use that time really, really well. So it was really great to see that. I'm talking like a mile a minute. I'm going to try and slow down. It was really exciting to see all the progress that was made this week, though. So congratulations to all of you who... Um, kind of worked through, you know, photos are, are the hardest thing for us to do. I don't know, probably because they're so overwhelming. It, not only are they overwhelming, but we get absorbed in the stories of those photos while we're organizing. So congratulations, everybody, for doing a really, really great job this week. Okay. Um, we're going to go through the same process we've been going through this week. We're going to gather together all of those things, all of those embellishments that we need to sort, store, and organize we need a place to put them when we're done. We need to have that purge box available. So that's kind of the first step in the process this week is to do what we always do and just get ready by gathering all of those things together. Then you're going to need some sorting templates and you can base your sorting templates on your um, themes and sentiments guide. So essentially what you're going to have is a pile of embellishments and you need to get those sorted into alphabets themes and sentiments A to Z, the calendar year and the rainbow. So making sorting templates. Now, when I first did this, I made sorting templates on old 12 by 12 paper. And um, that wasn't a great idea because if I had something big, it would kind of cover up the whole sorting template. So uh, for my second round, I switched. This is just a 12 by 18 piece of paper. I bought this at the dollar store in the kids art collect art section. And I was able to line off this six inches is all the themes and sentiments I'm going to sort onto this guide. And I did this for all of the different categories and the rainbow and the calendar year in this size, because it gave me, it was easy to lay out. And then I could work through that way for this exercise. As I'm going through this today, I've made these little miniature versions of it so that I actually have room on my little workspace to do all of this. So you're going to do, um, the calendar year, you're going to have a variety for that. You're, you're going to have a variety of sorting guides for colors. So I've got winter, 
I've got blues and greens. And like I said, for the demonstration, I just have kind of a limited number, but you do need to make them for all of your holiday seasons rainbow for every category. Alphabets and numbers, themes and sentiments A to Z. So I have two different ones, T travel, which is my only T category, and then beach baby birthday in B, right? So now once you've made your sorting templates, then you're gonna be ready to start sorting and organizing those supplies. I want to um, remind you that you wanna start small. Right. You want to work in small batches because you want to work from start to finish on the whole project before you make such a big mess that you have to clean the whole mess up because you need that space for something or whatever it is. So work in small batches, just like we've done for everything else. All right. Um, you're going to start sorting. And again, like I said, a container at a time. So whatever container it is that you have, and I've just pulled out a variety of different things you're simply going to sort into those piles. So these are birthday confetti, right? I just, um, we had a birthday party for a friend this weekend. This is what's left over that I sprinkled on the tables, but it's perfect for shaker cards or shaker pages. So those are going to be added to the birthday section. Now, one of the things I should talk about before I start doing this, I guess, is the containers that things come in. So, if you've got things that come in big containers, I mean, like these cute little jars, right? They're adorable, but they're hard to store and hard to sort into your organization system. So obviously I'm using a scrap rack, but you might be using pizza boxes or big envelopes or even the, your 12 by 12 fab file or something like that. These are gonna take up a lot of space in all of those and they probably are too big for most of those things, but you can condense them down. So all of these, these are a little uh, brown bling that match the rest of this adorable set. I just put them into the little Ziploc bags and now I can put them right into the right rainbow category. So think about things like this big carton here. Um, of These are stick on plastic letters, right? If I have them in a little Ziploc bag, oh, that one bag has a hole in it. Um, if I have them in a little Ziploc bag, I can put them in the alphabet section and then I can put them right into my scrap rack or into whatever system that um, storage tool that I'm using. But in this big clamshell, there's all this extra space that's, and it's just gonna be a weird shape. So keep that in mind, taking things out of their containers and putting them into something else that's easy to use. In particular with these rhinestones, these are all round and the same color. And these are all cat eye in the same color. And they were all together in this jar. Well, you know, when you're looking for 14 of these to make a flower, right? If you have to dump out the whole thing and dig through them, that's a pain in the neck. So a little pre-sorting is gonna make it a lot easier and then you'll be able to really see what you have. And no, yeah, I do have enough to make four or five of flowers with this petal shape. So that's kind of my first thing I wanna tell you is um, when it comes to bulky stuff like that, find a different way to categorize that or to store that so you can put it into the right category right so, uh, with your bulky your bulky things uh this is an example of washi tape so this is a scrap rack page called the embellishment storage page same one right designed to hold bigger bulkier things so if you want to put something like washi tape into your scrap rack think about something like this type of page um this again has like big beads and buttons and that kind of thing in it um so if you're interested in kind of being able to lock those things down so these all have a little locking tab on them this might be the page that you want to use and that is called the embellishment storage page if you're working in a scrap rack okay so what we're gonna do oh some more examples uh so here like in uh 12 by 12 bigger than 12 by 12 Ziploc bag. And as you're putting things in here by color, this is, that obviously is, try to put your smaller things in the front and your bigger things in the back so you get a really good visual. So if you're using something like this, that, that's a great thing to keep in mind. Small in the front, big to the back so you can really see those things. <clears throat> this is a weird little <laughs> thing. I don't know why it's in this pile or how it got here. This is from an old magazine. I loved this layout. It's for Halloween. And so I want to incorporate that into my 
scrap rack or into my storage system so that I can remember that I love that Halloween layout. So you may be printing things off the internet, tearing them out of magazines, getting them in, on a package, packaging for something else. And if you incorporate this right into your Halloween section in this case, then you're gonna see it and you're gonna remember that you love that idea and you actually wanna use it. So it'll pop up for you as you're flipping through your scrap rack or looking in your Halloween box or whatever it is. So just kind of one little added tip there about um, ideas of being able to store those right into your four section system so that you actually use them. All right, so I'm gonna, oh, and then here, this of course is the 12 by 12. This is loaded up all with purple, got a couple of pockets in it, purple and blue, um, paper embellishments and that, that type of thing. So depending on how you've chosen to store your products, there's a couple of ideas there. All right, so I'm going to work through this by sorting each thing. So this is airplanes and um, cameras. So that's going under travel. This is part of that group. So I'm going to put that over there right here's a big blue button that's going in blue and green this is also travel these are some little metal embellishments dimensional stickers travel cupcakes birthday so this is the simple process of going through whatever it is that you have and then sorting it into those themes right those are all blue got some more birthday candles here i've got some alphabets and numbers alphabets and numbers that's how easy it is to get those things sorted. Obviously, you're going to have a bigger pile than I do. And then from that point, you are going to simply take whatever tool it is that you've decided to use. Let me pull over my scrap rack here without knocking over anything else will be ideal. So, Susie, you'll have to tell me when you can see this or if you can see it. I've got about 75%. Okay, good. So... Now all I have to do, so I'm in blue and green already, is take everything from the blue and green category and flip through my scrap rack, in this case, and find pockets where each of those things is going to fit. So I'm kind of doing this at a weird angle, but let me see if I... Ooh, it's right on the edge. If it, I know if it falls over on, on my foot, I'll be very unhappy. But so this, then it, you just start going to go through that simple process of finding pockets that your supplies fit in, in the right color, or maybe you need to add a few pockets. Now, all of my little things are in Ziploc bags. So that's one thing I forget to talk about. These are really heavy glass beads, so I'm gonna put them in this um, embellishment storage page. All of your little stuff, you wanna put it into Ziploc bags so that you can just pull out the bag and dump it in your hand or dump it on your workspace rather than digging into the pocket to get those things. When you have things like this, so if I go, go to my travel section to put these things away, um, these are dimensional stickers. And one of the mistakes I made when I first started doing this was um, not leaving them in their packaging plastic because dimensional stickers, no matter where you put them, whether they're going into a box or a bag or your scrap rack, because they're dimensional, they're gonna get hung up on the edges of things. So I just cut the top off. You can see the packaging's still there. I just cut the top off so they're easy to get to, right? But I'm gonna leave them in that little packaging so that when I put them into my scrap rack like this, they will um, not get hung up on anything. So I'm just taking each of the little things that I've got for each category. Travel, there's some little blue bling. Now, right in the middle of that, I have a question. Okay, Susie has uh, a question. Aunt from Aunt Penny. Is there anything to keep scrap rack pockets closed? You can use, okay, so Aunt Penny asks, is there anything to keep scrap rack pockets closed? So there's a couple of things. First, if your pockets aren't staying closed, I want you to check the, make sure that your scrap rack is set up correctly. So when you look at it from the back, you should see this big metal thing, right? A lot of people set up their scrap racks using this as the base of it. So it's standing up a little bit taller. It still works, but it's like the pages kind of flop over and almost drag across your tabletop. So that's the first thing I want you to check. The second thing I want you to keep in mind 
is as you're flipping through your scrap rack pages, you want to either turn like I'm doing, right? Big chunks of pages to get to that next category. So in this case, I am looking for the birthday category. Um, or if you're just turning a page at a time, because you're looking in that category, turn from the upper corner. So the whole idea of the scrap rack is that the pockets, everything is going to be in the bottom of the pocket. But if you try to turn a single page from the bottom, that one's not a good one because it's long, and especially the smaller pages, and it flops far enough over, that's when you're going to lose stuff out of the pockets. Now, with all that said, let me put these little birthday goodies away really quickly here. Those in there, and I've got some stickers here. I think those are going to fit. No, they'll fit right. So there are a ton of tips and tricks on the website if you search scrap rack tips and tricks or another great idea is to just ask on the facebook group because the people who are scrap rack users who have kind of figured out all the tips and tricks might be able to answer you faster even than you finding the things on the website um but one of the keys about loading your scrap rack pages is choosing the right pocket size for those pages so that you are loading things up so they're behind the flap of the pocket and then they can't fall out. That flap goes over the top. But if things are below the flap, it makes it easier for them to sort of escape. Again, if you're turning from the top or in big chunks like this, you don't have to worry about it. It's usually only when you try to turn a page from the bottom that those things are going to slide out, right? So keep that in mind as you're going. But please look on the web. I mean, I could talk scrap rack tips and tricks all day long or so much it will do. Uh, but that's not actually our, our class goal. Now, all that said, the shut your flap tabs, which were designed to actually help you open your flaps. So you can see I've got them on these pages right here. One of the great things about the scrap rack pages is that they're completely clear, right? One of the bad things about the scrap rack pages is that they're completely clear. So it's hard to see where the flap is. So our little shut your flap tabs, they stick onto the flap and then they give you this little spot of color. So it makes it easier to grab that and open the flap on any pocket. So we should have called them open your flap tabs, but shut your flap sounded so much better. And then depending on how you position them, you can get some of the sticky stuff on the flap and some of the sticky stuff on the pocket. So that'll help hold your pockets closed as well. So the shut your flap tabs in small, these are the small ones, or the larger size can be used to actually help hold your pockets closed if that is a problem for you. Okay, I'm gonna push this out of the way and try not to push it off the desk. All right. I have my scrap rack on a rotating design board only for demo. I, it's not actually something I would recommend because usually you don't need to rotate your, your scrap rack. Okay. And then, oh, last but not least, I didn't put these away. My alphabet stickers, boom, they're going to go in my alphabet section. I did want to show one other sorting system. I was really impressed to see how many of you went vertical with your photos uh, store sorting. That was awesome. This is our die stamp and supply organizer. You know, I have them all over my office. They're everywhere. They make organizing all kinds of things simple, but they also work really well as a place to sort embellishments, especially if you have a bunch of stickers and that type of thing. So what I did was I took a set of paper storage box dividers and I cut them in half and I labeled them the same way I would label everything else that we're sorting. And then I could take this stack of stickers and you can see they're different sizes, kind of the same concept. And I could go right through and go, okay, that's home and family, boom, and it goes. And use this as a vertical sorting system as well. It doesn't work great for small little things because they just are going to drop to the bottom. But you can do it that way. It really worked well for me when I was sorting through big piles of larger flat things, stickers, dimensional stickers, die cuts, that type of thing. So this is a good option as well. Obviously, you can do it in your die salmon supply organizer, but you could also just do it in a regular, more shallow box um, with the smaller uh, divider, paper storage box dividers in use for that as well. All right, so that is your mission. Oh, I did want to show you one other thing. 
So for those of you who are not scrap rack users, but you're thinking maybe I'd like a scrap rack, how do I test it out? This is the 12 by 12 craft binder. It is now back in stock on the website. We've got some links that we'll post to that and then a variety of scrap rack pages. But you can see this one is all just set up as a rainbow binder, right? It has all the different embellishments, tags, buttons, bling, flowers, all kinds of goodies in there. Um, so this is a good example. In this pocket, this is too tall for the pocket flap to close, right? So, so if you had options to put this in a deeper pocket, then that would be better because the flap would close over the top like it will for these guys now, right? So they, they can't escape. Even if I turn this upside down, they can't get out of the pocket because the flap is closed over the top. So if you've got to do something like that, because you can see in both sides, when you put that bigger thing in, put it in the very front so it sticks out, you can still see the other things from the back side but the littler things will be still behind the flap and trapped in there. So those are some kind of the tips that you get when you um, go through the videos on the website about all the different things. And then again, you want to still turn, if you're using the 12 by 12 craft binder, you still want to turn it from the upper corner because that is how everything's going to drop down into the bottom of your pockets. And again, you can also use your shut your flap tabs to hold pockets closed in a binder as well as doing it on the scrap rack. So if that's um, something that you're like, how do I ease into a scrap rack? The beauty of starting with a craft binder is everything that you put into your craft binder, you're gonna be able to pull this binder out, put it on your scrap rack base. If you decide, okay, I really do wanna have everything right out in front of me and at my fingertips while I'm going. So it, you, you, you don't have to totally abandon or buy something all brand new. You can use all those pieces in the binder if you wanna go with a scrap rack later. Okay, glasses. Any more questions coming up, Susie? Yeah, I think they're getting answered. All right, let me swap over here and make sure. Um, uh, Bobby Ann Day said, this, will the Cindy bag come in pink? I can't tell you that. I did see a really great post from Terry Wiegand. Thank you, Terry. That said, um, hey, if you want this something that Tiffany makes in another color, please send an email to customer service um, at Crafters Companion and let them know, hey, I'd love to see this in this color because the only way that they know what you want is when they hear from you. So of course, uh, you know, that sent, please send an email that says you'd love to see it in another color. For now, we have the black on HSN and black and purple available on our website. Okay, quick question. Yes. Uh, let's see. Is the simply squared pages with nine pockets going to become available? No. Uh, the question was, will it simply squared become available? And the answer is no. But I think they might have, I don't know that we have it on our website still. There's like dwindling stock. I believe they have it at scrapbook.com. I just saw it somewhere still and I thought, oh, I need to share that with people. Susie's fast finger. She's on it. Yeah, I've got another. Oh, she has question another question. Here. She's um, debating getting another paper cart, but was wondering if there's a different cart coming soon. Uh, so the question is, I'm debating getting another paper cart, but wondering if there's a different cart coming soon. There is no cart planned for this year, 2022. Um, so there won't be one this year. I can't. Beyond that, I don't know. But currently, there's not. There's no plan. I'm going to tell you something about paper carts, though. If you don't have one and they're still available, you should grab one because I don't know. How many do I have in here, Susie? Four? And they all, they're all they all doing different things. Like one is our audio visual cart. Like all the equipment that Susie uses is loaded on that cart. I have one that's got my Cricut on it. I've got two that have paper. Um, I've got one that's got all my business like files on it. So once you get it, especially with the top piece, you are going to totally love it and wish that you had another one. I mean, they're really, really great. My husband has one in the garage because he likes the top um, for putting tools on, but he likes the shelves for putting things on that he's working. Usually he's sitting on his little stool or he's working on his little off-road things out there. And it's perfect for him because he, the four-way spinner wheels, he can just grab it and pull it along, spin it around and have access to all of those things. So 
um, while they're available, if you even are thinking that you might like one, I would grab one because they're not coming back anytime soon. One more stock question. Oh, one more question. Uh, Linda Smith wants to know when will the die file be back? Linda Smith would like to know when will the die file be back? Don't know, Linda, but I will check on that. Um, uh, also, that may be available at scrapbook.com. I'm not sure. Um, I know scrapbook.com carries our whole line of product. So if it's available in the U, if it's not available on our website, um, it will be, and but it is available in the US warehouse. They'll have it at scrapbook.com. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna sort a container at a time. I talked about buttons, brads, eyelets, that type of thing, putting them in small Ziploc bags. There's other stuff that you're gonna come across as you're working through your embellishments that's big and bulky and you're not sure what to do with it. My, um, my go-to always is don't reinvent the wheel, figure out a way that you can link it back like we talked about with, um, I'm gonna check and see if I have something in here to share with you. It might be in my actual real scrap rack, but let me see. Yes, it is. Um, so it, ribbon is another thing that becomes a challenge. If you just have a, some ribbon, not a lot, I would just cut a piece of paperboard, you know, like the backing from a heavy piece of um, chipboard and wrap those ribbons around it. So I had one that had like, I had like three or four Halloween ribbons. I just wrapped them around a four by six card and slipped it into a four by six pocket and put it in Halloween. Super simple. If you have a ton of ribbon because you're a ribbon junkie, I don't want you to take all the ribbon off the reels. I want you to make it as easy as possible. So something as simple as if you have tons, you might use flat under the bed type storage totes. Biggest thing, biggest piece of advice is keep it all in one layer. You want to be able to not dig through. So if you're using under the bed storage totes and you might have your ribbon in rainbow order, you might have holiday or seasonal ribbons, same four section system concept, just in that different storage tool. So this is ribbon and this is ribbon. So this is rainbow, right? Green. Uh, this is black, blue, purple. This is holiday and season. Spring, well, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, Easter. Same concept, right? But I don't want to unroll all of this and put it in my scrap rack. I just want to know, hey, I'm working on a St. Patrick's Day card layout, party, favors, whatever it is. And I want to be able to go and pull that by the same concept or category that we're using for everything else. So you don't need to reinvent anything. Don't make it hard on yourself. Make it simple, but you wanna link things back. Now I know what some people will do is they will take their ribbon like this, um, is all St. Patrick's Day ribbon, and they'll cut a little piece of it off and they'll just put it, tape it all on a piece of card and put it in the St. Patrick's Day section of their scrap rack. So they remember that they have it. And that is key, remembering that you have it. So if you're not going to think that way, ribbon, like I have ribbon <coughs> somewhere else, putting that little reminder. Same thing with washi tape, right? If you're storing your washi tape in a Shelly bag. Oh, Shelly with washi tape. So this entire washi tape is or bag is Christmas. You might want to pull a piece of that off and put it all on a card and put it in your Christmas section and then say, oh, I've got all that Christmas washi tape in this Shelly bag. Leave yourself a little note to remind yourself that you have it. Um, that's a great way to do that as well. So same concept, same four section system, same sort of reminder concept that we talked about with paper. Uh, we talked a little bit about it also with photos, right? The same ideas. Just how do you tweak that idea to fit whatever you're working on organizing so that your brain has a system to go with regardless of what tool supply, whatever it is that you're looking for. It's all kind of in the same pattern in your head, which is key to being able to find things really quickly and easily. So um, keep that in mind. These are, I know someone's probably going to ask, these are the six. Um, the slide session store box number six, Big Bertha. She's got four fully loaded. Edna's could also be four fully loaded. Merle's same thing, loaded with ribbon, using up that space, left to right, back to front, top to bottom. 
the only place you can buy the six individually right now is on scrapbook.com. And I think they only have three of them left. So if you want Big Bertha, you're watching today, scrapbook.com is your place. If you need a variety of sizes, the Stamps of Life, Stephanie Bernard has a bundle that is drawer, or that is uh, slice session store three, four, five. And those are our top four sellers all in one bundle. So you're going to get 12 trays total, 12 sliders total in that bundle. Stephanie has that for you on her website. Okay. Um, I think that's it. We're going to talk about, oh, let's talk about the winners. Winner, winner, chicken dinner last a week. So we have winners in two categories. We have the progress report winner. And we also have the ugly photo contest winner. So yes, Virginia, there is going to be an ugly embellishment contest. So if you, as you're sorting through your embellishments, find something really ugly, take a picture of it and throw it up on the Get Organized Challenge page, the Get Organized with Totally Tiffany Facebook page. And then we will choose a winner from there. So this week, two ugly photo winners are Andrea... Castrinos, McNair, C Codil, Codil. Um, you know who you are, even though I've just massacred your name. And she is one of the ugly photo winners for the forever ugly photo. So if you haven't seen these on the Facebook page, pop on over there and check it out. So she's got a very interesting picture of some sort of fur close up and personal. I don't know. It was funny. And then the second winner is Kimbra Turley. Kimbra's picture of the headless hockey player is the second uh, winner as well, which was actually an adorable picture of her. I'm assuming it's her son, um, but his head has been cut off. This is the crazy thing about photos. There was also one that I saw, I'm calling it the leg which was a picture of a darling little girl way, way in the background, but the forefront of the picture is just someone's leg. It's hysterical. It's really fun to look at all those. And then to think to ourselves, why am I keeping this? Like this is an ugly picture or it's pointless. Why do I keep moving it around? And hopefully as you go through the challenge, that question popping into your head, why am I keeping ugly paper, ugly pictures, ugly embellishments? Love them or lose them. Adopt that as your philosophy and you will have less to dig through and you'll get a lot more done. Okay, progress post winner of a $25 gift certificate is Beverly Richardson, who just did a ton of photo sorting and organizing. Everyone did. I was so, I, I mean, I said this earlier, I guess. I was so impressed with how much work got done and how much sharing got done of that work. And I just, I wanna reinforce to all of you, sharing your progress even if you feel like you didn't get anything done or you would have liked to get more done, um, sharing your progress inspires and motivates other people. They look at what you've done and they're like, okay, she had a room full of photos. I just have a box. If she can do hers, I can do mine. So please share, even share your struggles, share your challenges, because when you do that, other people are going to give you tips and tricks and ideas for how to push through. And there's somebody else in the group who also needs that information. So please share with us um, those types of things. My phone was beeping. So let's see if I've got a message here that I need to answer from. Um, Regina Park says, what new products are expected this year? Um, sorry, I was reading multiple questions. New products this year. Um, what do we have coming up? You sneak peek Tuesday tribe people. Of course, you've seen the 12 by 12. Um, storage and supply case that's coming. I think, like I said, late summer, early fall. Um, we have at least one new buddy bag that you are going to fall in love with, especially if you are a stamper. Um, and looking over at my, of course, we're launching uh, you all, you all already know this. We already talked about the slimline die storage, which is coming very, very soon to, um, we're not launching it on our website. So you have to stay tuned in for that, where that's going to launch, but that is coming. And even if you don't use slimline dies, you're going to love the size shape dimension of this new product and how easy it is to use. 
what else is coming? Hmm, I'm trying to think. The Cindy, we have a new fab file that we're working on. We have, ooh, <laughs> we have a new paper handler. You guys could probably guess what that's going to be about because you've been asking for it for a long time. Um, I think that's all off the top. Oh, I will just let you know, tons of requests for some different varieties in slide stash and store. And that is, we're working on that as well. So lots of cool stuff going on. Stay Couple tuned. Oh, Susie's got a question. Um, looking for the eight and a half by 11 paper taker. When's it coming back? Eight and a half by 11 paper taker. Um, I don't know when we're going to have it back on our website. Scrapbook.com does have it. And Stephanie Bernard has it on the stamps of life. And I think Stephanie has it in both black and pink. So if anybody has any color choices on that, it's gonna be Steph, the stamps of life. Okay, any idea when the 12 by 12 paper handlers will be back in stock? Good gravy. I have no idea when those are gonna be back in stock, but scrapbook.com I think probably has them because they are in stock in the US warehouse. And Stephanie usually carries an awesome, if you need a lot of them, like you can fit 10 of them on your new paper cart. Uh, Stephanie was carrying the five pack of those on the Stamps of Life website. So those would be my first two go-tos. If you have not bookmarked the Stamps of Life and scrapbook.com, do it today. Both of them try to carry, scrapbook.com as everything. Stephanie carries everything that she can ship at a reasonable rate out to, um, to you guys. So I would bookmark those two sites in, in, as a quick check for TT stuff, especially when we don't have it. For those of you who don't know, the TT website stuff comes out of our warehouse in the UK. Um, the US website stuff like stamps of life and scrapbook.com and joannes.com. Um, now, also there's a, to there's a totally Tiffany end cap going into the bigger Joanne stores. I'm trying to remember, I know they're gonna have the slide stash and store bundle on there. I know they're going to have hang and hold on there. I can't, I can't remember if they're going to have the paper handler, which is called the A32. So that's how I always think. Like, I don't know if they're going to have the A32, but um, I think they might. I will check into um, what's on that and when it's going to be and where it's going to be. We'll put up a list. because So there will be some sort of top selling TT products available all the time at the Joann's, at the bigger Joann stores. There'll be a little end cap of TT stuff. Is that it for you, Susie? That's it, yeah. Okay, Cindy Circo says, scrap rack flipping pages work best for question mark. The scrap rack flipping storage pages are, if you are unfamiliar with them, it is a page that has um, four by six and five by seven pockets on it. I think I have one in here. Yes, I certainly do. So let me grab this off here. So this is the flip and storage page. La, 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 la. So it has, it's kind of hard to, it has this cover sheet, mine's not locked down, that locks down with this tab, the tab flap right here. The reason it has the cover sheet is because if you don't lock it down, your flippers flip everywhere. Not that they don't just flip right back, but the idea behind the flip and storage page, it was originally born as sort of a card maker page because the bottom pockets are five by seven and the top pockets are four by six. But that works with everything that we craft with pretty much, right? Stuff comes in those two dimensions. And so the idea behind this is that you can use both sides of the pockets, but you can flip through. So this is everything that I bought for a road trip that um, Park and I went on. So all the different things for that travel, that trip. I flew in to meet him in different places. Uh, the, he drove, actually. I shouldn't say that we went on. He drove and I flew in and met him. Uh, it was very easy for me. Um, but you can see all the different state uh, little pieces that I bought. So it's a great way to organize a whole category. In this case, I'm sort of pre-organizing everything for this particular road trip. I used my washi tape to do a little USA um, you know, this is all this USA road trip stuff. You can put um, embossing folders in it. You can also sort photos. So if you were going to do 
photo layouts, you could do six po six pictures per layout. So this might be a good way to plan an album or I think it's 11 pockets total, 11 pages of an album. So it makes it just really easy because you can flip through and see all those things and it's fun and it's cute. So there's all of those things as well. So the flip and storage page has uh, five, no, six, four by six pockets on the top five, five by seven pockets on the bottom. And then it has that lockdown sheet as well. And they come in packs of three. And I believe that they are back on the website now along with the embellishment storage page. There was a bunch of scrap rack pages and accessories that arrived um, very recently. So most of them I think have been updated on the website. If they're not all updated right now, check back over the next day or two because, <coughs> excuse me, I know they're working to get those things updated as well. Um, okay. I think that's it. Oh, do you buy the plastic sleeves separately from the craft binder? Uh, Jeanette Adams asks, yes, the sleeves come separate from the binder. Now I also will tell you that scrapbook.com is the only place that you can currently buy a variety pack of scrap rack pages or sleeves. So again, scrapbook.com, I believe that the SKU number on that is P24, but if you just search scrap rack pages, they'll all pop up and they do have a variety page pack on there. And like I said, to the best of my knowledge, it's the only place you can get that variety pack of pages. It's a great way to start with that binder. They probably also have the binder. We have it on our, our website, but I'm sure they also have it there as well. Uh, oh, Rhonda Crowley said, does that fit in the calyx, the 12 by binder? It does not, it's tall. Um, let's see, did I miss anything else here? I filed scrapper pages. Okay, good. Okay, everybody. So your assignment this week as laid out in your handout, uh, sort and store one container a day for four out of the next seven days. Set your purge goal for what you're going to purge in your embellishments. Um, uh, sort more paper. So depending on how much paper you have left, uh, sort a few more inches of paper. Sort another year of pictures too, if you have help. Post your progress in the Facebook group. Um, submit an entry to the ugly embellishment contest. Now, again, you can post that on the Facebook group or you can um, send it in to customers. So if you're not a Facebooker, customer service at totally-tiffany.com and Leanne will make sure it gets into the contest. And when you've completed your challenge, make sure you take advantage of your reward and enjoy that reward so that you stay motivated and inspired to keep going for next week. All right, everybody, I think that wraps it up for today. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again next week. That's the fifth challenge. I Is that tools? I can't remember. I'm having a little brain. It's either going to be tools or color. I'll tell you that right now, one or the other. So, all right, everybody, have a great week. Get a lot done. I was, like I said, really impressed to see how much work happened last week. So um, hopefully you all will be able to get that much work done again this week. I will find out about the die file for you, Linda Smith, and have information on that. Let me just check my quick look here to make sure I didn't forget anything else on my list. Looks like I got it all. All right, Tuesday Tribe, I will see you next Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in today.